Hey guys, for this video, I'm going to be testing some LiPo batteries and I'm going to be testing their discharge rating with the ESR meter. Now this will show the maximum safe discharge rating, not the burst or punch that the battery has. So those 100C packs you're getting, they're not 100C. This will show you that. It kind of isn't very nice to find out that your pack is not what you paid for, but it happens every day. So without running my mouth anymore, let's get the testing. These are the batteries I'm testing right here. This is a 2000 milliamp 25C discharge, 1750 20C discharge, 5250 100C discharge, uh, 5000 milliamp, I think this is a yeah, 60 to 120 discharge, and this is a 5000 milliamp, and it is, uh, I think, uh, let's see, 60C discharge. So, let's see what they actually measure out with this thing. With me using all of this so I can check different batteries and all that, there's a little bit of resistance in the wires and all that. But, overall, you'll see what I'm talking about. First pack, 7.52 volts. The overall resistance over the entire pack, 45.6 milliohms. Testing one of the actual cells, 3.77 volts, 35% discharge, or 35% charge. 14C, 28 amps, 14.96 milliohms per cell. So, yeah, it's nowhere near the 25 that it claims to be. Okay, this one got 7.64 volts, 37.8 milliohms over the entire pack. 3.84 volts, 8.5 volts, and let's see, we have 11.48 milliohms, 17C, 29.9 amps, it's maximum safe discharge. Now this is a 20C rated pack, 17C, that's pretty close. And if we were to heat up this pack, which this may be the pack that I actually choose to test, uh, it'll probably exceed the 20C when heated up. We may have to find that. This is a battery that I use for crawlers, and it's been run quite a bit, 11.88 volts. We have a total pack resistance of 40.8 milliohms. Right now, it's got 3.97 volts, and the cell is 7.56 milliohms, 18C, 40.6 amps. Now, what was this one rated at? Let me see. I think this was a, uh, yeah, 20, 30C. So 20C normal, 30C maximum discharge as in burst. So that's not far off. Pretty good, actually. Okay, we're at 8.24 volts. This one I'm going to be running later. We have 25.5 milliohms for the entire pack. 4.14 volts per cell. Let's check the discharge. 5.4 milliohms, 14C, a maximum safe discharge amps of about 74.8 amps. Now, 14C on the uh, discharge. Just for the heck of it, since this is a max amps, we're going to put this over here and see if this other cell is any better. Same 14. So 14C versus 100C. Not even close, guys. Not even close. This is an old battery that I've run quite a bit as well. In fact, all these batteries have been run quite a bit. <laughs> I run my trucks a lot. 11.36 volts. Overall resistance over the entire pack. Now this is a 3S, 23.7 milliohms. That's actually pretty good. 3.8 volts, 41% charged. Let's see, 3.04 milliohms, that's pretty good. 20C at 101.2 amps. Not bad, that's actually tests out pretty good as opposed to other batteries I've tested, but nowhere near the 6120C that it says. The biggest battery in this test is a 6S from Gen's Ace. 23.84 volts, overall pack resistance, 31.8 milliohms. Not bad for a 6S. 
Cell voltage is 3.98 volts. Let's check. 2.84 milliohms. That's really good. 20C, 103.4 amps. So, pretty good. Since this is a 6S, let's check another, another uh, cell in here. We'll just go down there somewhere in the middle. 3.98. 2.76, 21C. So at room temperature, that's really good, guys. At room temperature of about 74 degrees, really the only packs that were even close to, uh, you know, actually having what they're supposed to have according to the ratings is the cheap batteries. The ones that don't really brag and overinflate the numbers. I mean, there's no real standard out there in the lipo world as far as what you can put on a battery i mean i can order a battery with no label on it print my own label and say it's 300 c discharge there doesn't seem to be any standard as far as uh how, how the manufacturers rate their batteries so with that maybe you know we can get some kind of standardization out there and i'm just sitting here talking to you guys right now because i'm working on heating up three batteries. This battery's at 94 degrees. Let's see if it made a difference. Look at that. 26C, 53.2 amps. 4.32 milliohms. Pretty big difference, and it's only a 25C. So now, we're at our rating. This battery is at 107 degrees. Let's see where we're at here. 29C, 50.7 amps. So that's pretty awesome. And it's only a 20C battery. Temperature makes a difference. Let's check another one. 25C, 56 amps, 100 and, or 4 milliohms. 104 degrees. Again, big difference. 20 or 30 C battery coming out at a full 25 C with a little heat. So heating the packs really done well. Now, I heated them packs. They lost about 20 degrees by the time I got them into here to actually test. So they were probably actually higher when I first, you know, took them out of my uh, heater per se. But still, it really helped out the pack. So, and if I was to freeze them, well, it would be even worse. And who knows, I may freeze one of these packs just to let you see just how bad it gets. However, I do have another bonus battery that I want to check. Normal room temperature of about 74, and then heat it up to hopefully around 110, 120 or so. And this is a pack that is personally one of my favorites. It's a 4S pack. I bought these things, and they've just done great over multiple packs. Can you get a bad one? Sure, you can get a bad battery of any manufacturer, but these have held up good. Dollar for dollar, I think they're my favorite ones. The Turnigy 5000 milliamp 4S pack. I'm gonna test one at room temperature and one heated up back to back and uh, see how big of a difference it makes. These have been raced, they've been put in X Maxes, they've been running my X Max with a 2028 motor. You know, just everything turned up to the most, been drag raced, dollar for dollar. In my opinion, these are the best batteries you're going to get. However, let's get to testing. About 74.4 degrees, 25.2 milliohms for the entire pack, 15.72 volts. Let's look up a cell. Two point five six milliamps, twenty two C, one hundred and ten amps. These are, as best I can remember here, I'll look on the deal here, twenty to forty C. So even at room temperature, these actually meet what the battery says it's supposed to have. That's you know pretty darn nice. Now let's test out the hot one. 
All right, let's check temperature. 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you, uh, well, let's take a look at the uh, 20.4 milliohms over the whole pack. Now let's look at the cell. All right. 1.12 milliohms, 33C, 167.2 amps. Wow. That's impressive. Let's see if the heat made it all the way through. 31C, 1.28 milliohms. Look at that. Another 31, 1.24 milliohms. Thirty-one. Look at that. Heat makes a huge difference, but be real careful when you heat up batteries. I mean, real careful. Fifty degrees Fahrenheit. This one's kind of cold. Let's see. Forty point two milliohms overall pack. Thirteen C six point eight four milliohms, only sixty six amps. So you saw this thing heated up, and it was way higher than this. You saw it at room temperature, and it was way higher than this. So temperature makes a huge difference. So guys, I was able to show you guys a safe discharge rating of a few batteries. I got to um, cool off a battery, got to uh, heat up a few batteries, and show you guys how temperature affects the batteries. For the most part, what you actually get out of your battery is not what's written on the label. Sad but true. Sorry. But it is what it is, and it's a marketing thing. You know, you'll buy a 50C battery before you buy a 20C battery if the prices are the same. Correct? But in my opinion, the milliamp hours makes the most difference as opposed to the C rating, which can seem to be basically uh, anything that the battery manufacturer wants to write on there so hopefully I don't make too many people mad because I know there are fans of certain brands that I probably showed in here some do better than others it is what it is but hopefully you guys like the video and um, as always thank you all for watching